In the news this week, up, up and away, electricity and water prices set to rise again. Also, drone pilots to take mandatory pre-flight safety quiz before taking off. Plus, political experts dismiss Barnaby Joyce affair as a non-story. And joyful occasions hit the streets as Perth celebrates Chinese New Year. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lung and Danielle Staniscott. Good evening. Households are expected to be slugged yet again with another price hike on water and electricity prices. This comes after the Labour state government's recent increase on utility bills by 10.9%. Taylor Hanna begins our coverage. Pressure for households to pay utility bills is set to worsen, with water and electricity prices expected to increase with the state budget's forward estimates. There is an 8.8% gap between what consumers are paying and the cost of the state in generating electricity to homes. Gap between what, we pay. what consumers are paying and what it costs the state to create the list and create and or generate and deliver electricity to homes. This gap is currently being subsidised by taxpayers. The opposition said the state needs to move forward into being cost reflective so people aren't paying too much for utilities. There are plans by the current state government to increase um, electricity by 7% in the next 12 months and water by 6%. Mr Nowda also commented that the state's water supply is over-recovering, acting as a cash cow for the government. However, Premier Mark McGowan insists that consumers are getting a fair price. The Water Corporation provides support to the state uh, and uh, that support goes into providing hospitals, schools, police, roads, environmental protection. Taylor Hanna, WAMN News. Australian drone pilots will be automatically grounded if they don't pass a compulsory pre-flight safety test. Aviation regulators welcome the test for pilots flying DJI drones, but there are concerns that many recreational flyers don't know the safety rules before takeoff. Nelson Liu reports. Drone pilot Alex is taking his drone for a flight, but his smartphone drone app asks him to take an online safety test first. He completes it with the required 100% pass and is able to take off. This is a sensible step in between to try and uh, gently coax people into doing the right thing. The compulsory exam by drone maker DJI and the Civil Aviation and Safety Authority enforces knowledge of air safety regulations. A small percentage of them who do the wrong thing are actually making it worse for everyone else. But the test doesn't affect non-DJI drone owners, leaving their air safety knowledge untested. It comes as more than 30 drone users were fined and hundreds more issued warnings for unsafe flying last year. The test is a proactive way to help drone users fly responsibly, but there are concerns recreational pilots aren't fully aware of the risks. Mid-air collisions with aircraft and injuries to people on the ground remain the biggest concerns. There are serious risks there. Again, that's why we've got the safety rules. And recreational pilots are advised to ensure safety before flying their drones. Should at the very least take the step of downloading CASA's Can I Fly Their app and using that any time they fly their drone. Nelson Liu, WAMN News. The Liberal and National Parties remain divided over Barnaby Joyce's personal life with Malcolm Turnbull engaged in a war of words with his deputy. The PM claimed Mr Joyce created a world of woes for his family on Thursday. But Mr Joyce has hit back, saying the Nationals is also angry at Mr Turnbull's remarks. Political expert says it's a non-story and a distraction for the government. Maybe there is a few, you know, maybe there's more to be uncovered. I, I really don't know. But unless they can come up with something serious and something important, you know, I think this is a story that deserves to go away. Human rights activists gathered in the CBD to remember a Kurdish asylum seeker who died on the Manus Island Detention Centre four years ago. 23-year-old Reza Baradi, who sought asylum in Australia, was brutally beaten to death in the processing centre. Activists are urging the Australian government to ensure safety while permanent resettlement options for asylum seekers are being finalised. We thought at the time that that would be the end of offshore processing. Four years later, nine more deaths offshore. People beaten yesterday in Lorengau, three refugees um, beaten in unprovoked attacks. Opposition has commented that the government needs to fulfil its election commitment to the taxi industry, which involve a pay buyback contingent on no new taxes. Liberals and nationals are reluctant to pass the new levy, but the Premier is urging them to support it. 
Meanwhile, the Transport Workers Union says the levy will create a level playing field where taxis will be competitive with Uber. I believe that the government should compensate them, and my understanding is it's the most generous compensation package in Australia. They said they would put in a buyback scheme. They did not say that the, that the delivery of that election, election commitment was contingent upon a new tax. British Foreign Minister Boris Johnson has remained hardline on the Brexit policies during a speech this week. It comes at a time when the Conservatives remain divided over the issue. Mr Johnson is pushing the UK to be separated from the rules and regulations of the European Union. Currently, Britain is set to leave the EU over the 29th March next year. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has rejected allegations of bribery, calling the accusation baseless. The comment comes after the police recommended charges against the PM following investigations lasting over 12 months. Mr Netanyahu has denied any wrongdoing in a television speech. It's now up to the Attorney General to decide when the PM should face charges. And finally, this week's Chinese New Year is upon us, with celebrations happening over the next two weeks to bring in the Chinese Year of the Dog. The festival kicked off on Sunday around Northbridge and Chinatown, with parades, lion dances and over 100 market stalls showcasing traditional foods, culture and customs. Ding Xiaoping, president of Chonghua Association, thinks Chinese New Year is becoming increasingly popular in Australia, with numbers growing every year. Yeah, good for all ages. The family is uh, the visitors, you know, particularly for the Western people, they can actually come in and feel in the, uh, the, the environment of the Chinese New Year celebration. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. You can catch up with our latest news on our website and Facebook. From Daniel, myself and the rest of the team, until 8 o'clock next Sunday, a very good evening to you. Good night. Mm -hmm.